Sup people, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time watching me, hello, I'm Eamon, I'm 23 years old, and why don't you just go ahead and subscribe so I can start, you know, finally paying my rent. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, but little update before we get into the case. I finally got an appointment to get vaccinated at the start of June. So yes, I was so happy. I've been trying to get the vaccine for a minute now. And as soon as I get it, I just want to just go to the club and get fucked up. You know, I wish. Honestly, I wish. What does the girl have to do around here to just do a cheeky slut drop? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Anywho, let's get serious. Now today's case has it all, I feel. It's a murder, a possible witch or a cult sacrifice, and of course, a good dog. Just imagine this, right? It's a very nice sunny day. You're gonna take your dog out for a walk and it comes running back with this huge tree branch in its mouth and you're like, oh, that's so cute. Until it gets closer and you realize it's not a tree branch, it's a fucking human arm. Yeah, that's what we're in store for with today's episode of True Crime Thursday. So let's get the fuck into it right now. On to the victim. Born on the 3rd of August, 1956, Jeanette De Palma lived in New Jersey with her family who were rather religious. The family was upper middle class and had a big house on Clearview Road, but that didn't mean Jeanette was just taking advantage of the bank of daddy. No, at the time of her death, she worked at a clothing shop called Seal Fonds. Now her friends claimed she was definitely a religious girl, but also suspected her parents forced her to go to church rather than her one wanting to go herself. Now, Jeanette was a quiet kind of wild personality. You know, she had just turned 16. She, she was figuring out who she was as a person, what she was into, what she wasn't into. On to the case. Now, it was the 7th of August, 1972, around four days after Jeanette's 16th birthday and exactly 25 years before I was born. 7th August, B-Day gang, yeah. Leo gang or die. <laughs> this is not the time for jokes. I'm just in a good mood today, you guys. <laughs> now, she left her house in the evening, telling her mum that she was taking a train to go to one of her friend's house in Summit. But not only did she never make it to her friend's house, she never even made it home that night. That night, the family was quite worried because she hadn't come home yet and wasn't answering any of their calls, so they reported her as missing. And after that, it was just a whole waiting game. It took authorities six whole weeks to find her body, and it wasn't even their good police work that led to the discovery. It was a dog. On the 19th of September, a woman was out taking her dog for a walk near the Hu Day Quarry, and puppies are already excitable enough as it is, but when her dog caught a whiff of some scent it just couldn't ignore, it ran off into the trees. And like I said at the beginning of the video, the dog came running back happily with a full decaying right forearm in its mouth. Yeah. The woman quickly called the police to the scene and it's like at that point as the dog's owner, what the fuck do you do? Like, do you say, oh, good dog because the dog uncovered a crime scene or do you not reward it because it picked up a fucking arm? I really don't know. Anywho, it didn't take the police long to find the rest of the body on a cliff called Devil's Teeth. That's, that's just never good. It's never good when a dead body is found in a place called Devil's Teeth. And I mean, it's called that because the cliff edge looks like the devil's teeth, apparently. I don't know, I'm gonna need a reference pick for that. I, I, I don't believe it. But anyway, the name of the location was not the weirdest thing about the case. The crime scene itself was astonishing. The trees surrounding her body had arrows carved into them and dead animals tied to them. There were crosses made out of sticks around her body and they seemed to have been arranged to encompass her in some sort of coffin-like structure onto the investigation. Now, after seeing all the bizarre things around her body, investigators immediately thought of a satanic sacrifice or something along those lines, maybe even witchcraft. So they brought a witch in who inspected the scene for any signs of the occult, and she came up with nothing. Because of how decomposed Jeanette's body was, the cause of her death was never determined, and therefore it was never ruled a homicide. Yeah, dude, because she voluntarily went up this cliff and constructed a branch coffin before getting in inside of it and dying. 
grow up. Now her purse and shoes were found near her body, but her necklace was never found, leading investigators to believe she hadn't climbed up there alone. Now the only possible suspect they could think of was a transient man known as Red that would always be seen near the quarry. And since he disappeared around the same time of her death, it seemed only logical that he had committed the crime and then fled. However, once officers tracked him down and interrogated him, he was no longer considered a suspect. But the whole case was just weird. The police didn't want to cooperate or answer any questions about the case, and people thought they were covering something up. Some even said she was found on top of a pentagram, not inside a branch coffin, but the police have vehemently denied this. Then, when Hurricane Floyd happened in 1999, they claimed the documents related to Jeanette's case had all been destroyed, but that wasn't true at all. So what the fuck's going on? On to my theories. Theory number one. Now, the first theory that investigators really held on to was that this was a satanic cult killing. The murder was so gruesome and grisly, and the details were too weird to ignore. Now, around the same time of Jeanette's murder, reports came from the nearby Wuchang Reservation claiming there were animals being killed, mutilated, and hung in the same fashion on the reservation. So automatically, the police thought someone from the reservation had killed Jeanette, but that's all still highly presumptive and kind of racist. You can't claim a group is responsible for something because they have different belief systems. Now, I'm not saying someone from the reservation wasn't responsible. I'm just saying you can't prosecute just for being different. But one possible reason this theory seems so viable to them at the time could have been the fact that it occurred eight years before the whole satanic panic period, and so fears of witchcraft and the occult were already very high. Many residents of Spring Springfield claimed a cult called the Witches let it be known that they planned to kill someone near Halloween time by sacrificing or poisoning them. So was it the Witches? Some satanic sect within the reservation? I don't know. A university history professor was contacted about the symbols since he specialized in the occult, and he claimed the symbols at the scene weren't really linked to Satanism or anything mystical at all. The date it was done had zero significance, and neither did the location. Sacrifices require reasoning, and there was no reason for it to have happened at Devil's Teeth. Theory number two. The second theory centers on an eyewitness report which points to the murder being just a regular homicide. Regular, like, what, what does that even mean? Anyway, a 19-year-old woman went to police to tell them that on the 7th, she had picked up a girl that was hitchhiking and she was pretty sure she had picked up Jeanette. She had described the outfit she was wearing, you know, dungarees and a light top, and that was what she was wearing when her body was found. The woman was in Summit at the time and was on her way home to Berkeley Heights. And when she picked up Jeanette and asked why she was hitchhiking so late at night, it was 8.30 p.m. at the time, she replied, saying she was going to Berkeley Heights to hang out with some friends. The woman then took her as far as her own home, which was fine because her friend's place was only a block further. While in the car, Jeanette seemed fidgety and quiet before eventually leaving the car and walking to a group of friends. This is really sus because where had she been all day if she'd left her house hours prior to go to the friend's house in Berkeley Heights, but she was only getting there around 9 p.m.? Was it a friend group her parents didn't know about? Did someone from this group kill her? Was it someone else when she was hitchhiking home, perhaps? I don't know. Theory number three. The third and final theory is slightly laughable at best, but it's just that Jeanette died from a drug overdose. Now hear me out. Her body was found very near to a spot where teens in the area would go and party. You know, it wasn't a place you casually walked to, it was hidden, and you wouldn't go there unless you knew that area for that reason. Now what makes things more suspicious was the fact there were remnants of a fire pit, meaning people had been there very recently. So the theory was proposed that she went there with some friends, they all did some drugs, and she somehow OD'd, and her friends didn't want to get in trouble, so they just left her there for dead. Now, I highly doubt this, because how shit of a friend group do you have to have that your friends would just leave you there to die? Now, a scalp sample from her body was sent for testing for narcotics, alcohol, barbiturates, but someone crossed out the two drug tests on the form, so the tests were never even performed. There was a high level of lead in her system, but nowhere near enough to be lethal. They also found this vial in her bag that had some unknown substance in it, which they also never tested. 
Why? I don't know. There's a lot of tests that should have been done but weren't, so could she have maybe ingested what was in the vial and died from that? Possibly. And that is it for today's case. I feel like there's so much going on with this case. All the signs do sort of point to a satanic sort of cult killing, but the thing is because all the fears were so rife about those things at the time, you kind of find these symbols when you're looking. When someone else examined the crime scene, they said they were really just branches around the body. They weren't in any specific shape or crosses or whatever the investigators said, but because they were so scared about this being an occult killing, they saw the symbols in the branches when they weren't really there. I guess it was kind of, what's that theory? The self-fulfilling prophecy where you believe something to be so, and so you start finding signs that support your theory when that may not be accurate. I don't know, I think honestly, someone just picked her up, killed her, and thought the best place to bury her or dispose her body would be devil's teeth. Let me know what you guys thought, what happened to Jeanette. Honestly, I feel like, I don't know. I think it's a homicide. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Anyway, I have been Eamon. I will catch you in the next one. Bye.